Hello, my name is Melissa Kochi and I'm the Research Officer for SIREN and I will be co-presenting today with Kevin Winder, who is NSEP Coordinator for Peer-Based Harm Reduction Western Australia. I want to begin the presentation by thanking and acknowledging the people living with HIV who have participated in this research. I acknowledge that we are recording this presentation from the lands of the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation. I also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lands which, all, which you all are viewing this presentation and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people participating in this conference. I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging and celebrate the diversity of Aboriginal peoples and their ongoing cultures and connections to the lands and waters of Western Australia. This presentation will discuss how our research team used a co-design method to explore the experience of accessing needle and syringe programs for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who inject drugs, who we will refer to as consumers for this presentation. It is designed to follow on from the presentation by Isabel Adams and Mara West, and we will be discussing the increasing Aboriginal people's use of services that reduce harms from illicit drugs project out of Western Australia. Research methods for our project included an Aboriginal advisory group and a co-design working group that guided all research activities, including ethics submissions, recruitment and data collection. NSP staff interviewed 25 consumers from Metropolitan Services, while the research team interviewed 18 staff or volunteers from seven NSP services. 11 of these staff or volunteers were from three Metropolitan Services and seven staff or volunteers were from five regional services from four regions in Western Australia. One of the elders interviewed seven key informants from Aboriginal organisations and the research team interviewed a further key informant from the alcohol and other drug sector. We had planned to interview consumers who lived in the regions, but unfortunately we were not able to carry out this activity due to COVID restrictions. Consumer demographics of the project included an even mix of male and female participants with ages ranging from 24 to 55 years of age. 48% of the participants were street present, 80% of participants reused injecting equipment, 68% supplied equipment to others, 56% shared used equipment, and 68% of participants used multiple NSP services. So why did we choose a co-design method and methodology? There is no denying that it is a favoured method in recent times. It suited our project as co-design as a methodology is underpinned by the belief that collaborative and community-centred approaches lead to increased efficiencies and greater overall impacts from research. With our project, we wanted our research to lead to practical solutions for increasing access to needle and syringe programs for Western Australian Aboriginal people. Co-design is a method that has been shown to deliver relevant, real-world solutions designed in part by those most affected by a problem. Co-design methodologies and Indigenous research principles both advocate for empowerment of target populations and view research as intervention. We sought to empower our target population by giving them a voice and a chance to say what they do and do not like about NSPs and how they think we could improve them. Studies utilising co-design with Aboriginal populations have demonstrated the importance of Aboriginal people's meaningful involvement in research. Our co-design process began by firstly fostering or creating partnerships with stakeholders in the well-being of Aboriginal people who inject drugs in Western Australia. Discussions with Dr. Michael Wright helped us to identify the key stakeholders to invite into our co-design working group. Identified stakeholders included elders, young Aboriginal people, Aboriginal people who inject drugs, researchers, government officials involved in drug policy, service providers of NSPs and peak bodies representing the needs of Aboriginal people who inject drugs. Stakeholders were sent an introductory email with an overview of the project and an invitation to attend the first co-design meeting. Four co-design meetings were held over 12 months. Each meeting had, a different, had different objectives and a different format. As such, group members varied their involvement depending on these objectives, their capacity and expertise. We held each meeting at venues with Aboriginal cultural security in mind. The introductory co-design meeting with 22 participants 
acted more as a chance for the group to get to know each other and the project. The second meeting was more activity focused with the group breaking into smaller groups, each with a facilitator. Each group then rotated through an activity to do with research methods before a whole group discussion. This meeting was of great benefit. We were able to get expert knowledge from a wide variety of people with differing experiences, but all with valuable input about working with our target group. With the information gathered, the research team devised the project's recruitment strategy, including appropriate remuneration and interview questions. We then wanted feedback from consumers on our research methods and interview questions and asked our service providers to recruit consumers for the co-design group. Kevin will now discuss his experiences as a service provider on engaging consumers in co-design and also in recruiting consumers to take part in research on a sensitive topic. Thanks, Melissa. Hi, my name is Kevin Winder. I'm the Needle and Syringe Exchange Program Coordinator at Peer Based Home Reduction in Before I start today, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet, the Nungar people, and pay my respects to those living with HIV who have generously participated in this research and to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and express my personal commitment to this research and to improving access to culturally secure harm reduction services and programs for Aboriginal people who choose to indirect drugs. So I'm going to talk about the recruitment, our process, the feedback from participants, and some reflections on our experience as a service provider. So for the co-design process, we recruited consumers from our hep C free peer education program. And those were consumers who were already engaged with the service, participating in monthly diary handover meetings. At the perfect site in SEP, we see around 18,000 occasions of service per year and around 4,500 or 25% of those are with Aboriginal consumers. And so we recruited consumers for the data collection surveys from our existing consumer base who are accessing the, the needle exchange. You can see on the right there uh, a sketch that one of the co-design participants did for us to give us some feedback uh, and to express the simplicity that was required in the messaging for the flyer and the poster that we would use. You can see the flyer and the poster there on the left. And one of the key things was the cash incentives for consumers. And uh, the cash payments were based on the incentives that consumers received for their participation in the Australian Needle and Syringe Programme Survey. And uh, the co-design participants received a, a higher cash incentive because they took part in two interviews that were lengthier than the data collection interviews. What was really important in making consumers feel comfortable was the presence of peers in the interviews and at all of the interviews there was either a member of staff who were identified as a peer and or one of the co-design participants too. We created an informal, informal environment using couches and providing snacks and drinks uh, to make for a, a, an informal environment to have a yarning session. Some of the feedback from consumers was that the uh, participation in the research was really empowering and they reported feelings of increased self-esteem, self-confidence, self-worth and a feeling that they were really being listened to. And they were really able to open up because of the implied trust that exists when consumers access our services as a peer-based home reduction organisation. And you can see some of the quotes there from consumers who took part in the co-design process. So some reflections, we had a really diverse group of stakeholders, which was great. And we were able to identify barriers to accessing NSP that translate to other health services as well. Participating in the yarning se sessions was really enriching. It was a joy to take part in the interviews. Um, and some of the challenges were the varying levels of understanding among stakeholders of harm reduction, particularly in the context text of harm minimization and the differences between harm reduction and demand reduction, and, and also the role of NSPs in supporting people to use drugs more safely to avoid the risk of harm associated with their drug use. There you can see, as most of you will know, some of the achievements of NSP, including um, the very low levels of HIV among injecting drug users, and also the return on investment for every dollar spent on needle and syringe programs, a cost saving of $27 as return to the community. Uh, you can contact me regarding any of our services and programs or the content of my slides for this presentation, and I'll hand you back over to Melissa.
Thank you, Kevin. So some challenges in utilising co-design methodology remain in logistical. Um, but other challenge was how best to facilitate meetings with people from such different backgrounds, making an environment that encouraged people to speak freely. After our first co-design meeting, we received feedback from one of the Aboriginal NSP workers that um, they felt really intimidated to show up to the meeting, let alone speak. This was because on the agenda, we had included all participants' official titles with the attending names littered with doctors and associate professors. We welcomed this feedback and assured for all the subsequent meetings that all tiles were dropped to any list of attendees. Enables to co-design included time spent building relationships with group members individually. This took the form of site visits to NSPs, service providers and having yarns with our members. Creating a safe space for all members to contribute their ideas and knowledge is essential and we tried to do this by holding the meetings in culturally secure venues, having some food and drink available and giving people plenty of time for general talk. We also offered the working group members a number of ways to participate including, as discussed previously, the choice of large or small group discussions, um, online participation or phone calls. So the key is flexibility. So um, it cannot be underestimated how critical the networks of elders and the rapport of NSP staff with Aboriginal consumers were as enablers for recruitment and data collection. Aboriginal consumers in the co-design process resulted in valuable insights to support data collection. If you would like any more information on the project, please not hesitate to be in touch. Thank you.